I need to go for here, and I've uh, spent the evening uh, playing with the third pre-release beta of uh, Computer Craft version 1.42, the much anticipated version that is compatible with Minecraft 1.32. And the biggest thing in this release is the addition of printers. Uh, printers, they take a uh, I've got an input tray where you can put stacks of paper, an ink spot to put ink, and then when you run print jobs through them, they output documents like these. And here. And you'll notice it supports color printing. Although, I'm getting ahead of myself with that. Because, uh, yeah, um, it only takes one ink at a time. And you notice it's got 60 of each right now. We'll use the interface. Eh. It is. I've already wrapped the uh, printer peripheral. Printer's not an API. I did a. Uh, just in the usual way. Peripheral.wrap. Right. And, uh. Let's go ahead and show you the commands on it. There's a. Uh, Quite a few in there's um, set and get and set cursor position, get and set, uh, get page size, get paper level, ink level for checking the size of the printer. Um, and then new page you call before you can do any printing, you call new page, and that's when it, uh, you know, it consumes one, it grabs an ink and a paper, and Remember, I had 60 of each, so if we call that right now. If we didn't have ink and paper at all, it would return false. It does. And oh, I still had a page. I hadn't closed my previous page. I had called new page previously. Um, yeah, if you call new page again, it closes the current print job and starts a new page automatically. So you don't have to, if you're charting on three pages you don't have to call end page except on the last page. Uh, call printer dot write. And end page. Why does I need to go clear these out? I should have done that before the video. And there our page came out. Um, so yeah, that's how that basically works. You can load different colors of ink, but once you've called new page, it's pulled in that ink, and that's what you're printing with until you hit end page and start a new page again. So the only way to print uh, multiple colors, you can take these output pages. Where's the one I just did? I just printed this one, printed page, put it back in the input tray, give it a colored ink, and new page. We don't want to overwrite what we've got on there, so uh, set cursor, pause. And print to it again. End page. And we'll look at this guy, and you'll see what? Did I not set the page right? Um, I must have put the wrong, put that blank one in by accident. Well, new page. In page. Look at this again. You'll see it's uh. Yeah, I put it in the blank page. Um, it doesn't over. It'll overwrite what's there. If I write again on the first line, it'll replace what's there with you know what I do, in some new color. You can feed a piece of paper through there as many times as you want, and you can use all 16 colors of ink. Though I'm not sure there's a lot of value to white since the paper is pretty close to white. Um, but you can do it. Um, now that's the basic printer set up. Um, just real quick since I'm in here, the uh, other big feature 
is that you can craft your floppies with any of the 16 dies to get colored floppies now, which is nice for if you carry a bunch of them around for identifying them in your inventory. Um, oh, and then uh, this one was sort of sprung on us at the last minute by Dan. Um, didn't give us much. N uh, I didn't hear anything about it until he was releasing the uh, the latest public beta that I'm playing with. Um, but they're wireless crafting turtles now. Um, and they don't have a tool. They uh, they have a crafting table where the tool would be, and then they have their modem in the usual place. So they can't dig or do any of those things that turtles do with tools, but they can craft and you know use RedNet. So uh, that that should make people pretty happy because a lot of people have wanted that feature very badly. Um, and now I'm going to show you what I've been working on. Uh, of course it would start snowing. And eh, let it snow. Um, I have set up a turtle, given him a chest on one side full of paper, and a chest on the other side with all 16, or, well, 15 colors of ink. I'm skipping white. Um, and he's sitting in front of a printer and running a program that listens on RedNet. I'm going to reboot it. Just clear the log. Um, he automatically checks the printer, starts, starts uh, two separate code routines, one that listens to RedNet and queues up jobs that it gets, and the other that uh, you know, takes jobs off the queue and handles printing them. And this interface is a little bit different than the, uh, the printer peripheral interface. This computer has the... Uh, I've added this print API. This is just a file saving error. I'll show you the code on that real quick. I'm not going to explain it in detail because there's quite a bit of it. Um, I defined some constants. You can put these percent codes. Uh, these are special printer codes that tell it to, you know, these tell it to change into high color. Then there's more. Uh, down here, um, there's one to force a new page. The, this one uh, forces the cursor to the left. If you've got a, when you do a new line, it, indent, it has an indent setting and that uh, lets you override that for a particular line and uh, you can print the page number on the page um, and then uh, yeah um, this is I need to have a little more secure system for doing this right now anybody who knows the printer's ID can you know could use up all your printer and ink printing whatever they felt like um, so I'll put in some kind of you know password system on that but, uh, but, uh, yeah, for now, uh, there's templates that define default, uh, settings for a document's tab size, indentation, the title of the document, um, and then header and footer I've not implemented yet, but I'm planning to get those done at some point. Um, I've just got two templates defined for now, I may add more if I can think of more that are reasonable. Um, it's a table to look them up by name. And then uh, that's just an internal helper function. Um, basically all this guy lets you do is uh, append a lot of events. Uh, you know, put your string... Just compile your string together. Ultimately what it sends to the printer is just a single long string uh, that defines everything in your document. Um, the API doesn't think about pages, it doesn't think about page size or line wrapping or any of that. It just, you know, compiles the stuff together and then uh, talks to the server. Um, this guy is the, the, the meatiest function in here, Dispatch, who ac this actually uh, takes the job and uh, puts the data together, serializes it, and sends it on to... Uh, the print manager um, and then by default it waits and uh, this function doesn't return until the print the, the document has actually printed but uh, if there's you know the printer does use a queue and there's a it can potentially be a really long time before that happens so there is an option if you pass true for this async parameter it'll uh, it wait still waits for an acknowledgement but uh, Uh, once it gets the acknowledgement, it returns. Whereas if you don't specify that, then uh, it will sit here and 
see if you say async then it returns here otherwise it actually waits until it gets the message from the print manager that the document has actually printed um, if you pass in asynchronous you can just wait for that message yourself um, or you can just not and just walk to the printer and go you know see when it comes out um, and then you call new document to set up a new document um, I'm not going to explain this code in any kind of detail right now I'll just show you how you use it Lua um, actually I'm not going to show you in Lua I'm going to show you in here um, first thing you got to do is call set print manager and tell it the ID of a printer you'll have to do that you'll have to do that once when you start up the um, computer every time it reboots you'll need to remind it again um, I might eventually make it to save that and I'm definitely going to have an authentication system where you'll have to actually uh, have a back and forth with the printer to uh, authorize your computer to use the printer at all otherwise the printer will just ignore you um, that to keep from using up your ink and paper um, and then you create a job you call print API new document and that creates a job which is a table that has some some data and some functions then you can just call print or write to print data on there um, these percent two percent three these are color codes um, I sort of skimmed past those briefly in the uh, document earlier um, tell it yeah, tell it to change colors these are kind of hard to understand so uh, and hard to remember at first so I've also for convenience added uh, these uh, uh, variables on here for it that you can just concatenate onto your strings print API red and there's green blue light blue light gray gray all the colors um, the dye colors and then uh, you have to do a because I'm overriding the percent for this if you want an actual percent sign you have to do a double percent sign um, tabs work, carriage return works, so you can put backslash ends in and they actually work, and print adds new lines, which as I showed you before, uh, the uh, printer's write command does not do. Um, any of this file, it creates one and then dispatches it. And uh, there's a pass in true this time that I uh, do want to do it asynchronously. I want it to return without waiting for the job to finish because then while the print manager is printing that job I put together another document and this one's more of like a this one uses the letter template and it's more it's just this one long thing of text which will have to get wrapped line to line um, and then it sends that job on and this time it does it synchronously so the program won't exit until both of these documents are printed and let's run test color now, the color process is rather elaborate. First, he actually grabs all 16 die out of the chest, all 15 die out of the chest, because this was I exper experimented with a couple of ways of doing this, and this was ultimately the faster one. Even though with this way he can only have one slot for paper, which means to move two sheets of paper, he had to make two trips. But despite that, this is still faster than the other approach I had, where he did not where he had to pluck one of 16 different dies out of this chest uh, on demand each time. Because going through 16 slots to pull dies isn't a quick process. But uh, he, you know, he printed page one. I had this job was, I didn't even point it out, it was doing two copies. I got page one, one of three, two of those, two of three, two of those, and three of three. Uh, I did not empty this before this demo. Um, cause there's some extra stuff in here. And there's three of three. And I want to go throw away the stuff I'm carrying. Alright. And, uh, I'll grab these from the end. Three, two, and one. Page one. See, it's, it, uh, he actually is taking the, you know, he prints one color and then he takes it out of the bottom and puts it back in the top and prints the second color and does that forever how many colors there are in the, in the uh, document. Um, and then he printed uh, the second pass for this letter, 
which this was the one that was just that one long string of text. And you can see it wraps it so that words don't get broken at the end. Um, yeah, it does. I used the uh, the no indent symbol there so that it wouldn't start a paragraph line like it did on this one. And then uh, you know, tab down there. Um, yeah, that's that. And then uh, that was color printing, which you might have noticed that you know wasn't exactly the speediest process in the world. Um, I have specifically coded the print manager to special case when it only has one color in the entire document. And to demo that, I've got this one file I print, which is seven pages long. Load it up seven ink, seven paper, bam. Six pages printed. And he can take all of those at once now because in black and white mode, he leaves the ink in here. And loads up all that. And so he's already done with a seven page document. One page. That was not the wrong one. I like monkeys, it's called. I grabbed it in one of my one of my favorite random internet funnies, which is old as hell. But anyway, yeah, it's seven pages long and it uh wraps from line to line and page to page all automatically. This was uh just like the letter before, this one was all one long multi line string. Um and it handled it just fine. And that's my demo. Um, just want to say uh, thanks again to uh, Dan and Cloudy for uh, making and updating this awesome plugin uh, mod for Minecraft. And uh, yeah, as always, thanks to Notch and Jan for keeping the uh, making the game in the first place, so that we can, you know have so much fun playing with it and modding it. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I'll be releasing the uh, code for all of these um, once the full version is out or my code is finished, whichever happens later. Got a few more features I need to implement yet. Um, he doesn't respond well to running out of dye. Um, he just sort of runs out and stops working or printing in the wrong color, which is even worse. And. Uh, the security that I was talking about before and uh, a few other little things like that um, but uh, yeah once it's all finished I'll be putting it on the uh, computer craft forums and uh, hope you enjoyed it thanks